Hey guys, so today we have a video which is stuff that- uh, it's the kind of video that I really enjoy filming which is basically a full face of a certain brand and then you get to kind of decide if- well no, you just get to try everything together kind of the way it was intended to be tested out. Let's get into it. Today we're doing Huda Beauty which is probably the most like opposite of my usual makeup style. I've only ever tried three products from Huda Beauty and it's these bad boys. These are probably like cult favorites I think from all of her little palettes. These were definitely like the most popular thing. They're the nude obsessions. The fact that not many brands have come up with this concept before which is make an eyeshadow for each skin tone. We really had to wait this long for this to happen. So technically my skin tone would be the nude light, which is like a beautiful pastel-y, pinky, brownie. You can do actually surprisingly many looks with this. Um, you know, you can go more pinky purpley, purple here, or brownie, nudie. You know, there's, there's a lot of things happening here. However, my favorite out of the three is the nude medium. It's just perfect, it's iconic, I love her. She just works this shade right here and this, this shade right here. And these apparently are much better quality than all the other small palettes. Because if you guys don't know, these are made in China, I believe. Yes, made in China. And then, let me just give you a little spoiler alert. I did buy another palette and I bought the big one. So this is made in Italy. So all her big palettes are made in Italy and then all her little palettes are made in China, which means these are usually lower quality than these. And I've never tried these, I always tried these. I haven't tried any other of the small ones. And I know people sometimes bought the small ones and were kind of disappointed with how powdery or just not pigmented they were. But I know these are definitely better than all the other small palettes is the consensus. I think I just kind of got lucky with the way I picked my palettes. But I'm excited to use the Italian formula. I got the one that I've always wanted. I always looked at this palette and then I was like, oh, I don't need it, I have these shades. But now that there was, I think Colt Beauty had like a 25 or 30% discount and I was like, it's my time to shine, baby. So I got the Mercury Retrograde, which is, I think, well, apart from the Naughty palette, I think this is her most recent big palette. Anyway, I love these shades. You can't tell because of the reflection, but they're just beautiful, pastel -y, beautiful. I like Nebula, which is just like a more glittery, chunky shade and Gold Glitch and Super Moon are kind of more flaky. Nude Rich um, is what that's called. And oh my God, look at those beautiful, rich shades. I love these palettes. And the packaging as well, the snake print in different nudes. <gasps> anyway, I was gonna use these in the video, but obviously I got the Mercury Retrograde. So let's just, you know, use the Mercury Retrograde. I've got everything except for, you know, the stuff they didn't have. So I'm gonna fold those in. I know she has a highlight, but I couldn't find any, or maybe nothing just caught my eye. I don't know. Anyway, she recently came out with a foundation and primer and a mascara, from what I remember. So those are new products. The rest are kind of older in her line. If you guys were subscribed, scroll down, make sure you start subscribed because YouTube is unsubscribing people. Um, if this is your first time, consider subscribing. Hit that bell, make sure it's on all rather than personalized so you actually know when I'm posting a video. My social media links, my puppy social media links will be in the description along with my drama channel. And then, you know, let's just get into the video. So I've been doing this thing lately where I start with eyeshadow and I feel like doing that right now. So what I do is I take tape, I basically angle it from my eye to kind of, kind of the end of my eyebrow. I don't get it too close to the eye. I just kind of, you know, just kind of let it do its thing. I actually put it kind of below the end of my eyebrow, kind of, I don't know, like a few millimeters below the eyebrow, just so it angles out a little bit more. She had a pretty extensive range. I feel like, you know, she she's got, she's covering the bases. She's got, you know, Complexion products, lip stuff, eye stuff, mascara, no brows, no blush, I think. Unless it came in like a palette, I think. I, I vividly remember some kind of a palette existing for the face. I've been re-watching Gossip Girl, which is just my guilty pleasure. I've been watching it annually for years now, ever since I was like 15. And it's just my favorite TV show, like I can't help it. There are some TV shows that I considered my favorites, but in reality, sometimes I'll start rewatching them and then I can't actually get through them again. Or I take breaks and then I come back to it like months later and have to restart all over again. One of those shows is One Tree Hill. I love One Tree Hill. It made me emotional the first time I watched it and I couldn't stop watching it. I just kept on, like I would not sleep at night just to finish that show. And then when it comes to rewatching it, I don't think I've ever rewatched it like in full, all in one go without any breaks, like any huge breaks. Gossip Girl, however, if I start re-watching it, I'll be done within a week. Like, I'm not messing around. I can just watch episode after episode. And the thing is, I can re-watch Gossip Girl and be just as surprised every single time. Like, I know what's happening. I know what the tea is and what the drama is. And somehow I am still shocked. I'm like, oh, she did what? Oh my God. 
scandalous. Obviously some things haven't aged well, the outfits for sure have not aged well, except for Blair. I think Blair's style is supposed to be classic, like she's one of those girls that wears Chanel and uh, Lady Dior handbags, which obviously those are all items that resell for a really good price because they never go out of style and they just keep on making them year after year. Like they're not trend products. I feel like out of all those people on the show, Blair's outfits are definitely the most classic and the, the least like, oh, that's 2000s. Serena though. We need to talk about some of those outfit choices and some of those um, hairstyle choices. I am not the biggest fan of Huda packaging. Why do we need your face on the packaging? I said this about Jeffree Star as well. We don't need you on the packaging. I think Huda's beautiful, absolutely stunning. However, I don't need you on my packaging. Oh, there's a foil. I'm sorry, Phoebe. I love that this mirror folds out, folds out completely. Look at that. The only thing is it doesn't hold. Let's see, um, I wanna swatch a few of these just for funsies. Okay, so let's just go Supermoon, which is like a flaky shade. Oh, that feels incredible. Okay, Utopia, Off Balance, Supernova. Just for now, those are the ones I wanna try. But they're smooth. Can you tell, like, they're like smooth. Okay, we have Cosmic, Ultraviolet. Nebula. Ooh, Nebula's pretty. And then Mercury. So those are the ones kind of, oh, those are so stunning. I tend to not buy palettes this big, you guys know this, but I heard that this quality was better, so I'm going to risk it. I find that when I swatch with my pinky, the shades don't really, well, the swatch doesn't really come out too great because it's just a small surface. Let me just repeat Mercury and hopefully that will be stunning. Okay, so those, I always swatch kind of, Okay, so those are those shades. They're definitely super like pastel-y, super natural. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know how to explain this vibe that it's giving me, but it's giving me vibes. Oh, this teal shade though, that's really good pigmentation, okay. Then we have, I already swatched off balance, Galaxy, Libra, also very stunning. Crash, Momentum. Momentum's a great like brow bone shade, I can tell. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Oh my God, this crash shade. <gasps> that in the crease. I'm obsessed. Vortex is like a deep, cool toned shade. Let me just swatch it twice. I don't want it to crumb off everywhere. Very nice. It's like a cool toned purple, I guess you could say. These are the shades so far. Oh my God, this nebula shade. Just the way it sparkles and mercury, I kind of want to use those two. Hot Mess is, it looks right on my alley, it looks like a dusty pink. I mean it's swatched a tiny bit patchy but that's just swatches. See that evened out now. It's very beautiful. Um, I already swatched Supernova. Karma looks right on my alley as well. It reminds me of Crash a little bit but just a bit warmer. And then we have Gold Glitch. Here it is. It's gold with specks of pink in it. And then we have Frazzled. It's just like a warm, coppery. So this is roughly kind of what we're working with. <laughs> I really want to use Nebula. I also want to use Mercury, but then I'd have to use Haze. Okay, I'm gonna go into Off Balance, which is just this pink one in the corner. Oh, that's very pigmented. And blends super well. I actually genuinely don't even know what vibe I'm going with here. I just know kind of roughly what shimmer shade I want to use and that's that on that. I'm gonna go into off, oh no, I'm gonna go into Libra, which is this like pastel purple shade. Oh, this one's actually lighter than the initial shade I put on, but that's fine. I'm just making things more purple. I'm dragging that all across. These are super pigmented. I mean, they're pastels and they're layering on top of each other super well. Like, I didn't think this pastel purple would show up on top of the pink this well, but it it definitely is. And that's all with fluffy brushes. I'm not like tapping and then blending. I'm literally just going in and blending, like sweeping motions. I'm going to off balance again and just add some more on the edges just to bring that pink back. Then I'm gonna take Hot Mess, which is like a dusty burgundy pink-ish, and I'm just gonna tap outside edge and then just crease. 
and not drag it in quite as far as I did with the purple, just kind of like to here. These are definitely shades that I'm on board with, you guys know this. I like pinks, I like purples, I like pastels, I like these kind of looks they're soft but they're still colorful and they're still bright these are blending like a dream now i know what they meant when they were like oh the italian formula in the huda palettes get the big ones why is it that the big palettes always better quality when i just want the same quality but less shades that's all i want in life i don't want cheaper i don't want lower quality i just want the same like price per gram but just less, you know? Just to deepen things up a tiny bit more, I'm gonna take Vortex, which is that cool toned purple shade, right on the tip of that same brush and then just circle it in right into the outer corner and then just kind of like on the outer V here and just wing it out. I I'm kind of winging everything out into the sellotape, but because we have the sellotape, no worries there. I'm gonna take Hot Mess and just tap it on until like the halfway line on the eyelid. Just blend it into that vortex shade. You really don't have to be careful with these. It's so amazing just how easily they blend. And there's really no fallout. I'm assuming once I put the shimmer shade on, there's gonna be some fallout because it looks like a proper foiled kind of a shade and like chunky glitter. But so far, so good. Okay, I'm gonna take Nebula, which is this chunky, beautiful shade and just apply it. This is like such a special shade. I definitely took too much. Let me just leave some on the pan. And then just kind of flake it out into those shades. There is zero fallout under my eyes from that chunky shade. How incredible is that? I am obsessed with how this looks. I am obsessed, okay? And then I'm gonna take Ultraviolet, which is the shimmery shade right next to it. And I'm just gonna tap that kind of on the area right between Nebula and the mattes, just to add a bit of sprinkle and shine. And now I'm just gonna peel those off. Oh, look looks crazy right now, but once I blend everything out and do my base, it's, it's gonna look great. Don't worry about it. I wanna go into um, Cosmic, which is just this like pale pink shimmer on the inner corner. Now let's get into the base and then we'll come back to the lower lash line. I kind of like to tap things out just to soften it a tiny bit before I go in with the base. I bought the Water Jelly Hydrating Primer which is literally just looks like water. Let me show you guys. Okay, one gripe I have. Some things come in cardboard packaging. Great. Some things come in this. So the Mercury Retrograde palette, all of the Nude Obsessions palette, and this comes in this plastic packaging that you just throw away, like this stuff. Please, can we not? It literally looks like water. Just like a jelly, very clear jelly. Little bubbles in it. Two pumps into my hand. One, two. Kind of like, it's very watery. It feels like water. It feels like I am washing my face. Okay, it's drying very quickly. It's kind of got like, I don't know, maybe alcohol in it or something for it to evaporate that quickly, I don't know. And also got the stick foundation. So I know she came out with a liquid one ages ago and then everyone said like the coverage is amazing but the scent needs to go. And apparently this one's fragrance free. Buildable coverage foundation stick. I got it in Angel Food 110N. I got a neutral. Sometimes I don't know how warm things are gonna lean and this is pretty yellow toned still, which is nice. I think this is gonna be a good, good shade match. I hope it's creamy. I hate when sticks are just not creamy. Okay, I'm gonna use my favorite, which is the Kaleidos Angled Contour Brush C1 and I use it for foundation. I don't know, roll it up. I think this is so aesthetically pleasing. Oh, I'm just gonna do two lines like that. Oh no, it's doing that thing that stick foundations do that I hate, which is just essentially not blend out. See, you can see where I applied the two lines. Okay, um, let's try again. Apparently it's buildable, so apparently I can build it up. And this is a very light layer that I'm doing right now. Like that wasn't a lot of coverage at all. And my skin doesn't look awful, it just doesn't really look covered. Uh, let's try again. I'm gonna use this the way I used my Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, which is apply it directly 
on the brush and then just stipple it on. I don't know if it's this brush, maybe it's just too flimsy for it. I'll take the brush that I used with my Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, which is the Fenty Contour Brush, and then just go on my forehead with it. I've been really hyping this foundation up and so far I am not seeing the big deal. I would love to. I mean, my skin just looks a bit dull wearing it. Like there is zero like life to it. I don't know, it just doesn't blend the way I'd want it to. It's not awful, but it's also not the best. It's just, I feel like I'm just tugging on my face with no effect. Yeah, it's very dry. I mean, it looks fine. I'll see how it kind of looks once I'm done with my whole face. So far, I'm kind of so, so about it. I just don't know if that hydrating jelly primer did much maybe with a different primer this will look better i also have the um overachiever concealer which is in the shade whipped cream this looks like the it cosmetics bye bye under eye concealer so i'm just gonna use it in a similar fashion it's got like um like a metal tube thing i'm not gonna apply that straight to my eyes because i find that tends to not be the way i want to i applied way too much and this is stark white <laughs> too much too much let's let's start slow and build considering it's called the overachiever i'm assuming that means coverage and i'm just gonna use my finger because it's gonna warm it up and blend it out oh it's drying quickly none of this really needs to be set in reality i mean this is already drying and it's just adding to the dryness of my face it's kind of patching up well no i think it's ugh. I think it's okay. It's just drying very quickly and it's leaving like, like you can quite clearly see where I touched it. I mean, so far her complexion products just aren't for me. If you have really oily skin, this might be the move for you. Look, it's just so powdery. It's one of those. Yeah, it's just drying up. Like you can tell it's supposed to be a 2016 matte Instagram look, which I guess is what Huda Beauty is. It's like clickbait Instagram makeup. I should have used the brush from the beginning and just lightly dotted because this is actually kind of working. This is also a Kaleidos brush and it's one of my favorites for concealer because it's kind of fluffy but small and it kind of does coverage and blending at the same time, which is fun. I bought a setting powder i just i don't know if we need it because all of this has already set like look at that that's set after blending it out with the brush i don't hate it which is not saying much but i don't hate it which is a step up from i hate it um, oh and this one comes in the plastic packaging as well this is the tantor which a lot of people compare to the chanel the soleil bronzer which they only have one shade of whereas huda has a bunch this is the shade fair this is what that shade looks like i want to touch it and oh it's emollient oh, that's what i want yes okay this is the shade okay i'm happy with this because i was scared it was going to be the same powdery formula i'm just going to use the fenty to st oh god blend 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 oh no oh no blend 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 I should have started, I should have started small. This is enough. Like literally the leftovers of this is enough. Mm. It's not lifting the foundation, which is nice. Which I mean, makes sense because these should be able to work together considering they're from the same brand. You'd assume that she would make them work together in harmony and peace. I've managed to blend it out. It wasn't that stressful. Yeah, it's not lifting the foundation, which is fun. Obviously don't powder first and then you should be okay. I love how warm and cool it is at the same time. I like this shade. I now have to even out on the other side so I have to go through the scary process again. I think so far this is actually something I like. It is nice and buttery and smooth and it actually melts when you touch it which is what you want and yeah it just reminds me formula wise kind of of like the glossier stretch concealer kind of like you touch it and it melts kind of a vibe okay look this might have fixed everything that was happening on my face uh-oh 
I keep on applying too much. I feel like even it's super pigmented. So it's something you have to get used to because it is so pigmented, but it blends out so easily that that kind of doesn't matter because you can just like move it around and then just blend it into your skin fairly easily. And it does not move the foundation around. Like I am swiping pretty hard and my foundation is not moving. I think this is a really good cream bronzer. I mean, so far I was a huge fan of the Fenty. It had the shade range. It had the emollient formula. This might be my new favorite. I really, really like it. Okay, well, that was fun. I have the setting powder in Sugar Cookie, uh, which is, I think, the translucent shade. A light dusting with a brush. Just kind of where I applied the concealer. Surprisingly, it doesn't make it cakey, which is fun. It's more so smoothing it out than anything, but it's not my favorite look for my skin. Like, absolutely not. I'm gonna powder just this, like, center bit because I always get shiny there and I already am. I expected this powder to make a mess of this whole look more than it already was. And somehow it kind of fixed it. So, not mad about it. I'm gonna use it with my kind of regular products and see how I feel about it then. But so far, I think it's kind of saved the situation. And it's really good. I'm gonna take Odin's Eye, once again, Kaleidos um, Blush Brush B1 with the Odin's Eye Water Lily. I actually have a code with Odin's Eye, like always, it'll be in description to get 10% off and then I get commission from that. Up close, the texture of my skin's not the best. It's it's typical matte foundation, you know? Um, For highlight, I'm gonna do something a bit different today. I'm gonna use this Hourglass palette from this holiday collection, the Lighting Edit Mini. And I love this highlight right here. It's stunning, it's foiled, it's beautiful. Better than in the big palettes is all I'm gonna say. See that? It just looks wet on the face. I've definitely looked better before. <laughs> Let's start with that. Okay, she has two sets of these setting sprays. This is the Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist and she also has the one in the black bottle. These are supposed to be killers when it comes to just scent. So let's just mix it up. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> that is quite the scent. It smells nice. It just smells like perfume, which is not necessarily what I need. It literally feels like I sprayed perfume on my face. I'm just tapping it in to my face. I mean, that's kind of fixed the look. I'm thinking maybe, right, if I used this along with just blending out the foundation, it could have worked a little bit better, but like I shouldn't have to finesse it that much. Now it kind of looks fine. I'm gonna do the lower lash line. One of these stubby brushes going to Off Balance and Libra at the same time. Blend it in. I mean, the skin texture is definitely improved with that setting spray. So I think if you don't mind strong scents, then it could be a good setting spray. I think, you know, sometimes the excuse brands give is they want it to be like a nice experience. However, to me personally, getting a shot of that much fragrance straight into my nostrils is never really a fun experience. It's like, that's just not something that's fun to me personally. I'm gonna take Nebula just a tiny bit, just that shade I have on top and apply it right on the bottom here. So she recently came out with this mascara. It looks kind of spidery on the back, not my favorite. It's also, I think, a plastic wand. Oh, it's also plastic packaging. Can we not, Tudor? Let's care about the planet. It's double-sided. So which side am I supposed to use first? Two mascaras combined, volume and then curl. Okay, I'll do volume first. That seems, I'm not gonna use primer just because I wanna see how this looks without lash primer. This is what the volume one looks like. It's a plastic wand, but it, oh my God, that's quite good. Just on first application, it's quite a dry formula, which I love. Look at that. Oh my God, that's perfect. That is literally perfection. Like separated, beautiful, fled. <gasps> Oh my god, if the other side's fixed, like if the other side makes it even better, then I'm gonna f lose my mind. 
because I've never liked plastic ones. Time for layer two, which is curl and length. This is giving me length anyway. I thought this would be my least favorite. I didn't even want to add this to my basket. I was like, I hate plastic ones. I don't believe in the gimmick of two lashes. I mean, two sides. I was like, I don't want it at all. But this is currently, I'm going to say it, one of my favorite, if not my favorite mascara of the year. It's shorter, stubbier spikes with a slightly curled wand. The only thing is I don't like how uncomfortable this is to use. Because of the double-sidedness, it feels like I'm using a travel size mascara, which is never the most comfortable thing to use. Because it kind of touches your nose, like the packaging. So I kind of wish they just sold it as like separate mascaras that you buy together. And then you can buy them in like a duo, like you just buy them in a package. And then they could make them both this size and then like two full size mascaras. Oh my god, the separation on these is incredible. The volume, the lift. And it's not clumping up. Like the more I'm doing, like the less it's clumping up. I love this. Okay, I'm just gonna use this one for the lower lashes. They're so fluttery and just like, as if I'm wearing fake lashes. This is beautiful. I love it. Glad we got to experience this together. Now that the setting spray has settled into the makeup, I think it looks okay. Like the texture of my skin isn't awful, but it's also not the best thing I've seen in the world. I wanna try it kind of different ways. I think to this as a start is okay. I think we can make it better, but it's not bad. It's not as bad as I initially thought. I have the lip contour, which is just basically a lip liner in the shade Trendsetter. It looks so much darker on camera than it does in person. I don't know why. Okay, this lip liner is in between a ColourPop and then just like a wooden liner where it's, it's quite glidey, but it's also quite sticky. Like when you put your lips together, it sticks. I think what that's gonna do is grip everything else on top. This is called Prom Night and I got it for free. So not only did I have a discount, I also got a free lipstick. I think that's a bargain. Not really because I spent all this money. I love this packaging. I love how aesthetic it is. And I love this shade. <gasps> it's that textured, textured like matte lipstick. Like the Lisa Eldridge ones. I kind of like that the lip liner was darker because this lipstick is quite cool toned and a bit light. So I think the deeper lip liner kind of added that little bedazz to it. This is the Huda look. I love the eyeshadow. I like the mascara. I like the lipstick and the lip liner. I'm thinking about the base. The setting spray could be a little less pig like a little less fragranced. I'd say primer I need to use with other foundations. It seems a little bit liquidy, a little bit watery, like it just kind of disappears. Anyway, I'll try it again. Foundation not applied straight to the face. I think there are like I have to use it the way the way I've started to look to learn to use my Vanish Stick foundation, which is like, it, you have to kind of finesse it a little bit. But once it's on, it looks quite nice. Concealer, I'm gonna have to work on, I think the best way is to kind of buff it out with a brush, like very light application. Powder, I think is nice. I mean, I don't see any issues with it. I'm gonna use it with other stuff. The Tantor is amazing. Look at this, look at that. It's the perfect shade for me. It blended out super well. I love it. Eyeshadow, beautiful. Mascara amazing and then the lip contour and the lipstick are also very pretty so yeah as a whole this was quite a positive video and yeah if you guys enjoyed it give it a thumbs up comment down below anything you want to comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every time i think of something to do say that bell you be notified when that's happening social media links drama channel affiliate links any other links in the description i'll see you in my next one bye guys